If the history of Hollywood has proven anything, it's that audiences have shown themselves to be incredibly fickle. They beg and they plead for a movie to get made, but then never even bother supporting it when it hits cinemas. Now, of course, the reality is a little more nuanced than that, but there are a number of long-requested films that a lot of people wanted to see, only for everyone to categorically turn their backs when they finally came out. The reasons for this are myriad. Perhaps the film was poorly marketed, or the reviews were terrible, or the studio simply waited too damn long to make it. But in each case, fans failed to turn up for a movie they insisted had to be made. To make it sting worse, most of the films on this list are also pretty good, such that they actually deserve to enjoy some well-earned box office success, rather than tanking catastrophically and having to settle for, at best, selling some DVDs or being rediscovered on streaming. Everyone was enthusiastic about these films out of the gate, but by the time they finally hit cinemas, that excitement had long since faded. For shame. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 movies everybody wanted but nobody watched. Number 10. The Lego Movie 2 – The Second Part The Lego Movie was one of the biggest cinematic surprises of the last decade, a shockingly clever and creative tribute to those teeny plastic blocks we all love, rather than the crass, cynical commercial exercise it could so easily have been. The film was consequently a stonking box office success, and a sequel was soon enough announced with the Lego Movie 2 The Second Part, finally releasing five years later in February 2019. Though there was considerable initial excitement about the sequel announcement, the Lego Movie 2 cratered at the box office despite solid reviews, grossing just $192.4 million worldwide, a mere 41.1% of its predecessor's $468.1 million haul. The reason for its failure has been dissected by box office analysts ever since, some blaming samey marketing which failed to distinguish it from the first film, others citing the five-year gap between movies and, perhaps most persuasively, the ever-troubling notion of franchise fatigue. The Lego Movie 2 was actually the fourth entry into the Lego Movie franchise, with Lego Batman and Lego Ninjago films being released during the aforementioned five-year gap. Though Lego Batman was a solid success, Lego Ninjago bombed at the box office less than 18 months before the Lego Movie 2's release, seemingly ensuring that all the initial excitement around a second mainline Lego movie dried up, killing the franchise. It's a damn shame, really, as while failing to meet the highs of its predecessor, the Lego Movie 2 is a respectably enjoyable animated sequel. Number 9. Blade Runner 2049 Though Ridley Scott's original Blade Runner was famously a box office bust upon its original 1982 release, its esteem grew exponentially in the years and decades that followed, as large swarms of sci-fi fans discovered it on home video. Blade Runner is basically a mandatory inclusion on any list of all-timer sci-fi films, enough that Warner Brothers greenlit a sequel, Blade Runner 2049, which finally came to fruition under director Denis Villeneuve in 2017. With a first-rate director and Avengers-worthy $185 million budget, fan excitement was through the roof that they were getting another mega-budget glimpse into this world some 35 years after Scott's original. Despite the anticipation, though, Blade Runner 2049 was a box office failure, grossing just $259.3 million worldwide. A slow-paced 163-minute sequel to an artsy, philosophical sci-fi film was never going to make a billion dollars, but Warner Brothers clearly hoped it would pull at least $500 million and prove a solid success. Despite all that passionate clamouring for a Blade Runner sequel, evidently a lot of people decided to stay home when it mattered most. Though it has since performed well on home video, that's not nearly enough to make Blade Runner 2049 profitable when you factor in Warner Brothers' massive marketing spend. Number 8. Dread it can't really be understated just how much people loathe 1995's Sylvester Stallone starring Judge Dredd film, primarily due to Stallone's ego-driven decision to commit the cardinal sin of removing Dredd's helmet, as was never done in the comics. But when a Dredd reboot was announced, comic book fans were giddy that Hollywood had a golden opportunity to get it right this time and redeem the property. And yet, while 2012's Dread received warmly positive reviews from critics, it bombed horridly at the box office, grossing just $41.5 million against a $45 million budget. That's barely one-third of what the Stallone film made 17 years earlier. 
The blame was largely levelled at the movie's marketing, which placed a heavy emphasis on the 3D aspect, enough that it was actually titled Dread 3D. Though Dread has been a strong performer on home video and streaming, it's a damn shame that more comic book fans didn't support it theatrically, as would have actually made a sequel possible. Given that there was a considerable uptick in the popularity of R-rated superhero films in the years following Dread's release, things could have gone so differently with a few years difference and a more confident imaginative marketing campaign. Number 7. Serenity Joss Whedon's cult sci-fi TV series Firefly wasn't given much of a chance by Fox, who aired the original run of episodes out of order and then unceremoniously cancelled the series in December 2002 after just 11 of its 14 episodes had aired. Both fans and the show's cast, led by Nathan Fillion, were devastated, and despite a concerted effort to get the series picked up by another network, it went nowhere. Yet, due to strong DVD sales, Whedon was able to get a follow-up film greenlit at Universal, with Serenity being released in 2005. Firefly fans, who typically refer to themselves as browncoats, helped spread word about the film online in an attempt to accentuate its modest marketing budget. But alas, when Firefly hit cinemas, it failed to break out into the wider mainstream, just barely recouping its $39 million budget. Given Firefly's mighty home video sales, it was no doubt a disappointing result for Universal, who quite understandably figured they'd at least turn a decent profit off the lower-budget sci-fi production. You can blame the lacklustre marketing, which fans bless them tried to bolster, or the fact that it was the glorified series finale to a cancelled TV show, but Serenity deserved to do so, so much better than this. Number 6. Watchmen an adaptation of Alan Moore's legendary comic book series Watchmen had been in the works for roughly 20 years before the Zack Snyder version finally stuck and actually got made. One of the most iconic and acclaimed comics of all time, a Watchmen movie seemed like an absolute slam dunk on paper, yet the complexity and ambition of the material also made studio executives wary. But Warner Brothers nevertheless gave Snyder $138 million to make an R-rated 163-minute adaptation of Moore's novel, and one which stirred up much excitement when its first trailer was put in front of The Dark Knight in the summer of 2008. Reviews ultimately skewed mixed positive, but in an era where R-rated superhero movies had yet to find their place with audiences, Watchmen's pre-release hype failed to translate into commercial success. Watchmen was an atrocious box office failure, grossing just $185.3 million worldwide, with analysts citing both its long runtime and grim tones as turning mainstream audiences off. It did, however, perform phenomenally well on home video, enough that it's estimated to have actually turned a modest profit. Even so, that a film whose original trailer stirred up so much buzz online tanked so hard when it mattered most was genuinely dispiriting. Watchmen is generally accepted to be one of Snyder's better films today, and it's easy to see how its more challenging content probably would have gone down better with today's more enlightened comic literate audiences. As such, it's little surprise that HBO's recent Watchmen series, a fair improvement over Snyder's film, admittedly, was both a massive critical and ratings hit. Number 5. Snakes on a Plane Oh, remember Snakes on a Plane? A classic example of it does what it says on the tin marketing. All this B-movie homage needed to sell itself was that ridiculous title and a trailer clip of Samuel L. Jackson complaining about the mother effing snakes on this mother effing plane. Snakes on a Plane was one of the world's first movies to be virally marketed online through internet memes before the world at large even used the word meme. The excitement was palpable enough that New Line Cinema even commissioned a small round of reshoots to change the movie's rating from PG-13 to R, including the addition of Jackson's aforementioned one-liner. To the layperson, it seemed like Snakes on a Plane couldn't fail. The internet couldn't get enough of how hilarious it all was, and with a $33 million budget, the path to profitability seemed fairly straightforward. Yet, while not a catastrophic dud, it ended up underwhelming and grossing a mere $62 million, failing to even double its budget in the process. The consensus was that internet lols didn't translate one-to-one -to, -one to box office success, with some suggesting that many online fans, especially those younger enthusiasts who couldn't see the R-rated movie in cinemas, simply pirated it instead. Number 4. Gremlins 2 – The New Batch 
1984's Gremlins was a massive box office hit, grossing an incredible $212.9 million against a mere $11 million budget and clearly suggesting a new Hollywood franchise had been born. Yet it was an entire six years before the sequel Gremlins 2 The New Batch arrived and while there was plenty of initial demand for a second Gremlins, by 1990 interest had seemingly waned considerably. The kids who found Gizmo adorable in 1984 were now older and seemingly less interested, while the sequel's heavily satirical tongue-in-cheek tone caught many remaining fans of the original by surprise as the first film was more of a darkly comedic horror film. As such, while saddled with a heftier $50 million budget, Gremlins 2 ended up grossing a poor $41.5 million worldwide. This was ultimately a textbook example of both what happens when you leave audiences waiting too long for a sequel and when you deviate from the expected sequel formula. Gremlins 2 later found itself cult fandom on home video, though the fact that it grossed less than 20% of the first film while being produced at over fourfold the cost is nothing if not an abject failure. Number 3. Scott Pilgrim vs The World It's easy to see why everyone was excited about Scott Pilgrim vs The World, an adaptation of Brian Lee O'Malley's beloved comic book directed by rising cult fave filmmaker Edgar Wright, with a crackerjack cast of likeable young actors including Michael Cera, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Chris Evans, Anna Kendrick, Brandon Routh and Jason Schwartzman. If you were in geek nerd circles in 2010, it was easy to believe that Scott Pilgrim was going to be a huge hit. The hype train was chugging along and backed by strong reviews out of the gate, it seemed like a forward-thinking comic book movie that couldn't miss. But Scott Pilgrim was ultimately a commercial dud, grossing just $49.3 million against an $85 million budget, no matter the rabid online enthusiasm for it. Much like Snakes on a Plane, this seemed to be a case of internet fandom failing to translate into box office stubs. Given that nerd culture became considerably more mainstream in the years that followed, it's easy to see how Scott Pilgrim would have performed much better had it released in, say, 2015. Arriving as it did before superhero movies ruled Hollywood and video game adaptations were taken seriously, Scott Pilgrim failed to make general audiences bite, even though the mainstream has come round to it more in recent years on streaming. Number 2. Sin City – A Dame to Kill For Robert Rodriguez's adaptation of Miller's legendary graphic novel Sin City was a massive critical and commercial success back in 2005, enough that a sequel seemed inevitable. And though Rodriguez quickly got to work putting Sin City 2 together, the project was repeatedly delayed enough that it wasn't finally released until the summer of 2014, a whole nine years later. Against a $65 million budget, Sin City A Dame to Kill For made just $39.4 million, not even 25% of the original's $160 million haul. It was a catastrophic result for a film that frequently landed on lists of most anticipated movie sequels, but that ultimately took too damn long to get made. Sin City's stylistic innovations no longer seemed cutting edge in 2014, which in conjunction with the sequel's inferior script and reshuffled cast seemingly turned audiences off. Had Sin City 2 been made within, say, three years of the original's release, things might have turned out quite differently. Number 1. The Matrix Resurrections Though The Matrix Revolutions brought the original trilogy to an underwhelming end back in 2003, there was still a lot of general audience goodwill for the series and especially lead Keanu Reeves, enough that a two decades later follow-up certainly caught people's attention. The first trailer for The Matrix Resurrection stoked intense discussion online about the potential for it to revive the long-dormant franchise, whereby it could both satisfy long-time fans and earn itself a whole new generation of supporters. Yet even with the film releasing simultaneously on HBO Max, Resurrection's box office figures were, to be kind, atrocious. On a $190 million budget, Resurrections grossed just $156.6 million globally, serving as a concrete vote of no confidence for Lana Wachowski's bold new vision. There were many factors to consider, from the pandemic to the script's aggressively meta nature, the mediocre action sequences and the absences of cast members Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving. 
Releasing mere days after Spider-Man No Way Home as it did, the choice for casual audiences was a no-brainer, and the only folks who actually stepped out of their homes to see The Matrix Resurrections were the most devout faithful. Despite promising mainstream engagement in its marketing, Resurrections couldn't hold their attention, and once the polarizing word of mouth got out, it was dead on arrival. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any that we missed, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, at WhatCulture, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with WhatCulture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.